Well, g'day, g'day. Yeah, we're coming to you from Kulkadi. Well, I am at least. I'm traveling solo at the moment. So, yep, van parked over the road. The first thing that comes to mind is how big the road is. It's massive. A few old buildings, a few old hotels. And uh, I'm on my way to the information center. There's apparently a really neat, um, there's a really neat museum in there. So we'll uh, go in there and find out the ins and outs of Coolgardie. There's just a couple of little signboards around here. I'll, I'll have a look at those first. September 1892, Arthur Bailey and William Ford discovered gold at Coolgardie. Bailey rode the 120 miles into Southern Cross uh, with 554 ounces, which equates to 16.8 kilos of gold, which they discovered in one afternoon with a tomahawk. So he uh, lodged his claim there. The Kulgadi Rush 1892 to 1893 was considered one of the last great gold rushes anywhere in the world. It virtually emptied the Southern Cross which is a, one of the spots I'm going to go to next and drew thousands of fortune seekers from elsewhere in Western Australia and indeed around the globe. By 1898 Kulgadi was the third largest town in Western Australia after Perth and Fremantle and it's reputedly the 15,000 residents and another 10,000 in the immediate area. So I said that the main streets were wide, 40 meters wide, and it was to accommodate camel um, and horse teams, obviously to be able to move from one side to the other or turn around. Here's one of uh, Kulgadi's landmarks, sadly a little uh, worse for wear in the center there copped a little fire a few years back but uh, I believe it has oops, part of the either side of it still functioning and um, yeah way on the far end is the post office Right, well, let's come into a little museum here. This is a, um, a display for a, uh, a miner that got trapped when there was a torrential downpour in 1907. Looks like he spent nearly 10 days underground before he was rescued. So the bloke's name was uh, Vachetti and uh, he was out at a Bonneville or Bonnevale mine site. So yeah, he's gone down a mine shaft. All the way down into here, he's obviously been working down here somewhere and of course a big thunderstorm came and uh, before he realised the water had flooded and he was only able to get into this little pocket here of air. So they managed to rail the dive suit and things, which was used to help rescue him. Fires, man. I reckon they had a fire back in, well, between 1895 and 1899, there were 12 major fires caused havoc in the town. Went down a hell of a lot of beautiful buildings. But yeah, a really nice spot. Very informative. Well, I just popped out of the museum. Ooh, that was highly recommended. Very informative, um, well displayed and things. The building itself is just glorious. It's um, an amazing tribute to being built way back then. Also over my shoulder there, you see a couple of other bigger buildings. They're the uh, couple of hotels. I think there was about 23 odd hotels in the street or in Coolgardie. So I'll find out for you in a little bit more detail but this little corner here that I'm walking past, a lot of empty plots of land. I believe it had hotels on each corner. Even over here the Marvel Bar, Marvel Bar Hotel. So we were quite a grandy. So I've lost count. Um, I think the thing said 23 odd hotels. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about eight just on this corner right here. So, uh, yeah, poor old gold miners. They, they struggled to make money out of the gold and then they came over here and, and drank it away. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I think probably the publicans made more money than the, uh, the gold prospectors. So yeah, so on this corner here, there was four hotels on uh, the street block. 
um, they were built down this end of town so that would be closer to the men that were working on fly flat and when uh, Corgardi fell into decline the hotels were carted away in pieces Alrighty, I'm moving out of the streets of Corgardi I'm gonna go head up there's a, a lookout an old mine pit that I can go and have a look at so we'll move on out from there but before I leave, um, there was an interesting observation, um, I think it's from photos or even in here in the information centre, there was a, a scale model of the, 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 the town and I pointed out all um, oh, these little tanky things in the, in the middle of this bloody highway here. Anyway, um, yeah, there was a, a time in history where um, there was a big uh, blaze and apparently 30 odd buildings burnt down to the ground and it was only saved by the fact that they um, they destroyed a couple of the buildings beside the fire so that it wouldn't spread to those. So um, an onslaught from that was um, those big tanks along the street here. They had put these tanks as three or four tanks per bay. And um, yeah, that's what they used in precaution for another big fire. So uh, obviously with the materials uh, the places here were built of back then, they were just uh, wooden shacks and... There you go. The challenge, if you can lift it with your bare hands, you can take it home. Only if it was real. Blay had a... Um, in the uh, museum, the museum had a display of all the houses in the street and bits and pieces. And this is a replica of probably what the houses look like. In fact, this one is a re recreation of Jack Cairns' hut, 1890 to 1971. Uh, So he was seen outside, so he was seen outside this camp here, he called Belson. Jack lived here alone for 30 years, taking his own life in July 1971, soon after realising oh, the release from hospital. He had broken his leg and hip in an accident riding his bicycle into Kulgadi. That's why the bicycle's sitting up there I suppose. Bugger. So just on closing, I'm leaving the little park here. It's a nice um, one opposite the information centre. This bloke behind me, I think it was AP Brophy or something, rode this camel for 600 miles without water. I don't know whether that was, yeah, no, it was definitely the camel. I think he had water. And uh, yeah, the camel was called Misery. I wonder if it was before the journey or after the journey. <laughs> just doing a little walk and there's a little street, um, Hunt Street I think it is, just off of uh, the Coolgardie uh, Township there. And uh, you get to a little uh, art heritage trail. So there's little sculptures and things that look quite neat in the distance. Yeah, so that's what it's all about there. You've got the, the eagle, sits on the bluff in Coolgardie with his eyes looking back at the camp, hoping that one day he may return. Story of the crow and the eagle. So uh, the crow went into the eagle's camp and uh, destroyed the camp and apparently killed the children. So the mythical thing goes. And of course the eagle came home from his trip, found the crow mess and discovered what had happened. He went straight over to the crow's camp, swooping down with his wings spread out. He grabbed up the crow um, and his family soared up into the sky and then he crushed them with the strong claws. He released them, letting their innards fall and splatter all over the ground. So Yada, the eagle, was exiled from the area of the country and the crows um, remain, still lay over a large area which is now called Lake Lefroy. So yeah, and then over here we've got this feature over here which is believed to be the crow's beak uh, was rammed into the ground making a point at where the lake juts out. Well, virtually just a, a block over. There was a four-wheel drive track. I ain't got one. 
So done the next block over. Um, I think it was called Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Pit, Lindsay Mine, Lindsay Lookout. I think, I hope it's Lindsay, I have to say all those. Um, not too sure about the history, what it is, whether it was gold or something else, but uh, and how long it ran for and when it was abandoned and things like that. But uh, it's just a good little vantage point. If you're tall enough or got a long arm, you might be able to just see the, uh, the water. But, um, yeah, we'll go and have, have a look at this. Eh? Alrighty, found me park up spot. One other bloke here. So uh, it's nice, uh, flattish. It's all right. This is the um, the railway, the old railway station. Oh, cool. So there was ten thousand people parading um, on the opening of the uh, railway station, and the pioneers back in 1892 were given pride of place. But it said the the arrival of the train ended Coolgardie's isolation. Perth was only a few hours away, not weeks. Heavy machinery, water, condensers and building materials could be bought relatively easy. Food and other supplies. From here, 1896, the line was extended to Kalgoorlie. Not long after that, Coolgardie Railway Station closed in 1971. The, uh, the railway hotel was there and uh, the Denver City Hotel is over there. A bunch of relics and things in the backyard here. And sadly, sitting on the old tracks here, looking in need of repair. There's some carriages, I think you call them, or I guess this one here with lots of boarded up windows would have been a um, probably a travelling carriage. And of course the one with the sliding doors, that would be for freight. And I guess that would carry a chemical or a boiler or something so there we go oh, there's some old some old relics here and here's the old steam train up front how cool is that look at that Little ripper. Sadly, the end of the line for the old girl. Unless Michael J. Fox comes back and needs to go back to the future. <laughs> Morning, ready to go, packed up, takes me a little bit longer without my sidekick um, in Kulgardi here and um, yeah, not going to travel too far today, going to go and get some supplies at the IGA, I miss the cemetery, you might think why does he want to go to the cemetery but hey, there was a lot of people here, a lot of history and yeah, there's a couple little sites I want to go and see, so we'll see if uh, I can find them and then um, yeah, I'm just going to head south and uh, just stop at a couple little stops on the way all the time in the world loving it so uh thank you Coolgardie. awesome place to come visit lots of uh, history um and yeah plenty to keep you busy and uh, there's a caravan park across the road well there's a free camp here and obviously leading into town and out of town there's, there's camps as well so yeah plenty to see and do and um chillax Here's the uh, modern cemetery out the back of Coolgardie. 
It was really interesting to note that um, during the, the, the height of the plague, that uh, whilst half the town were dying of the uh, Spanish flu, the rest of the town were burying them. So uh, there's a lot of really interesting sites. The older site um, that you can go to, um, they're doing a lot of restoration. It was really interesting um, looking at a lot of the plaques. It was uh, some that had obviously um, died through rockfall, some falling down mine shafts, but there was others that were um, shot and murdered and um, others that were shot by an accidental gunfire. And then of course, not to mention the plague and the, uh, the flu and um, bits and pieces as well. It was uh, pretty sad to see. And uh, at the older cemetery here, there's also a, uh, a site where, I think it's John Holland, and uh, he was part of the, uh, all four wheel drivers will know, the Holland track. And uh, it was a very um, popular route that all the gold miners took to get to Coolgardie. So I was very pleased. Lastly, um, it was interesting, there was a cycle race of which people were invited from all over the world, and this one here, he fell off his bike and hit his head and he died. Interesting spot to visit. All right, all parked up here. Yadandi Well, I believe. It's about uh, 67 k's um, west of Kulgadi. When I arrived here, it was bloody hot. Um, I think it was uh, yeah, just on sunset. It wasn't terribly good, it got very cloudy and um, even uh, the moon was just poking in between the cloud every now and again and a few stars. But what was amazing, um, I think it was around about um, 10 o'clock, I was just about ready to turn in and uh, the wind got up like you wouldn't believe. So just a little tip out there, I was fairly close to that tree. So uh, I moved it a few feet just forward just to eliminate any risk. So it was worth just getting up, driving, just to have that peace of mind when I went to sleep last night. little tip, um, I don't know whether you can see it, but down beside my, my trailer wheels here, I just drew a line, there's one on either side, and that uh, because I'm traveling solo here, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna run into anything. So yeah, it worked pretty good. Um, so yeah, I've had to park on this side of the tree, so I still take advantage of a bit of solar, um, but obviously uh, the van's getting bombed by that sun and she's pretty warm, but the window's open on the other side, and with the shade on that other side, it's nice and cool. It's actually quite nice to sit out there as long as you can put up with the flies. The other thing I got up there is uh, Starlink. Got him up there, it's the first time actually now I've been um, out of um, cell phone coverage and um, I've paid the um, $35 extra here um, for portability on top of the um, residential. So uh, you pay, I think, $135 residential and then you can add the $35 portability a month and then you can stop it whenever you like. So that was our idea that when we finish touring, which I don't see in the near future, um, but it gives us a residential unit that we can just start back up again. Well, I found my next stop for the day. Well, one of the only stops and then there's a rest stop. This one here is quite important. Uh, it's a memorial site, Barabin. We'll go in there and uh, see if we can find a little bit more out about it. So from what I can understand is that, um, I think it was December 30th, uh, 2007, there was a fire and um, these truckies were held up at the uh, roadblock and uh, I don't know how long they were there for or something but they were given the all clear to continue but um, they got uh, trapped there were some bad um, wind conditions that were qu quite changeable so I think four truckies went in one was a smaller truck and was able to turn around but uh, uh, before it got into too much danger but the other trucks continued on and um, yeah got into a bit of strife so Bit of a sad one, sounds like three truckies lost their lives. Rabin Town, 
It was an overnight stop for the stagecoach um, from Southern Cross to Coolgardie. Back in the gold rush, 1895. About the fire. So yeah, December 2003, there had been a three years of extreme fire danger. And uh, in the afternoon of the 28th of December 2007, a fire started in the vegetation within an informal roadside parking area, 10 k's west of here. The south southeasterly winds picked up flames and carried the fire northwards over 17 kilometres. And by midnight, the fire had burned 2,219 uh, hectares. So the hottest day in December recorded in Southern Cross, the winds gusting 38 kilometres an hour when the fire crossed back over the Great Eastern Highway around midday. So around 8 p.m. another wind change saw the fire shift to the northeast and towards the highway again. With the fire now intense and fast moving the tragedy, three occupants of two trucks died when a convoy of vehicles was engulfed with flames. Alrighty, I'll make this brief, it's busy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm on the, uh, I think it's the Pipeline Heritage Highway or something. But obviously you can see there's a grand old pipeline there. Obviously uh, helped along by C.Y. O'Connor. who travels behind me from Mundaring, Kogwili. Pretty awesome. Well, made it to the next destination, the next night. So nice, might be another night. Kareli Rocks, um, show you around. It's a, um, an area where they uh, had a dam and was used for steam trains and things like that, and uh, water supply. So pretty fascinating. We've uh, been here two or three times, Jude and I, and uh, absolutely love the spot. And uh, there's only, I was the first one here, it's after midday. Um, and I was going to say two four-wheel drives just drove up but they're not there anymore so once again I'm the only one here so I parked up like this good spot I'm gonna get my uh, rises in the east sets in the west sun a good clearance for the south um, and I've gone in a sort of like a semicircle and I'll show you what I've done um, when it's all set up there but uh, I intend on spending a bit more time outside there's always time, uh, hard to spend time outside with the bloody flies. So I've got a little system which I hope will work and uh, set it up and I'll show you guys. But Curly Rocks, watch this space. I'll take you for a little visit as well.
So I don't know whether I mentioned it, but yeah, there's some nice um, picnic tables around. There are some fire surrounds. It's highly encouraged to bring your own firewood. Don't go using the firewood that you find around here because it's fragile. If you can bring some, bring some. There is a flushing toilet, but it's in a bad state at the moment. It's in uh, shutdown mode for repair. And there is a dump station for campers to uh, utilize as well. But I believe uh, the water, even though there's a dam right here, I think the water's a bit scarce. Um, yeah, other than that, um, I'll watch when you are having fires, watch your, um, your time of the year. I think it's uh, November through to the end of February or something. But uh, don't quote me, check that out. But uh, yeah, no need for fire at the moment. Um, well, this way is uh, Coolgardie. And uh, we're coming past the, there's a number of pump stations that um, force the water through the, the pipe um, to its locales. And so there's this one here and there's this one down here before Southern Cross. we will end up probably next night. Curly Rocks, that's where we are right here. So not far down the track, come across our first fenced off area. At first I thought this was probably a, um, a digging for uh, gold. But of course reading that plaque back there, I believe it's a, um, a well. So the walk along the first track, off to my left, seems to have brought me down a, another flume or aqueduct that comes from the, the smaller rocky outcrop I think. Looks like I'll have to do a little detour down here. So yeah, all of a sudden you step out and you're greeted by what looks like a lunar, lunar loomscape. Look at all these um, solid slabs as far as I can see there along the uh, side of the granite outcrop and that's ducting the water down into that little channel and the same goes that way. So it's amazing to step out from that beautiful little uh, sc scrubby bush and then bam, be greeted to another planet. So here we go, we're at the top of the hill. You can see that little, uh, I call it a flume, but uh, you can just make out that wall going around the bottom there. Every day brings new light to help us on our way Always taking my breath whether sun or rain The wind will carry us over that horizon we see on the road to the other side. Don't you look beautiful? I know oh, these blue tongues, shingle backs, lots of these guys. The um, the tail looks like the head, so uh, it confuses the enemy. Or what ends what? There he goes. Yo yo, find something new, cooking. <laughs> Mind you, when uh, Judy leaves me for a few weeks, I've got to be self-sufficient. So uh, yeah, whipped into the old supermarket, grabbed some goodies, 
Um, I'll just go and grab some. Uh, I'll just go and grab the extra goodies out of the van, which is me wrapping the salad, the healthy stuff. I'll be back soon. Oh voila! There you have it. The wrap mightn't be so healthy, but blue vein cheese. No, it mightn't be very healthy either. Cannonbur. Don't tell Jude. She left that behind. But the lettuce, cucumber. Got that on board. So, uh, hey. follow me. Follow me. Where are you now? So, um, cooking on the old Barbie down here. I've been doing the Piri Piri chicken. So, um, yeah, because Jude's been away, I've been able to um, indulge in some of the spicy stuff that she's not used to. So, um, down here, I don't know whether you can see it. Oh. Piri Piri chicken and some garlic mushroom. Danny. There you go. There's me wrap. There's me leftovers for tomorrow. I don't know. Might be a little lunch for tomorrow. The, sm the smell. Yeah. And yeah, here comes the, the big will it fit. Well, what do you know? I'll be happy with that. Yep, it's that time again. It's been a great time here at Caralia Rocks. It's an awesome spot. Awesome. Great history. Um, peace, quiet, breezes, heat, all sorts. It's got it all. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm heading west again. So um, just remember to hit that follow, subscribe, the like, comment if you have to. Um, definitely subscribe and follow because it helps our channel grow and we can give you some more content. So I uh, look forward to catching up with you. Sweet ass.